We made it to Friday, everybody, and we're back for our final menu from Richard Hanna, lead chef instructor at Le Cordon Bleu in Pasadena, California, who's been teaching us all week quick and easy recipes for Thanksgiving. Richard, this is our last recipe. What are you going to I teach know. us? I know. Hi, Carolyn. It's been a great week. Thank you Great so week. Much. Thank you for having Thank me. You. This is the American tradition. What is it? Today, we're roasting turkey roasting with turkey. garlic infused potatoes. Garlic infused potatoes. It's going to be really good. I can't wait. Yummy. Not as quick, but really easy. <laughs> That's okay. It's a turkey. It's got a roast. It's got a roast. All right, where do we begin? So this is our biggest part of Thanksgiving, yes. uh, but it's part of the traditional feast. Yeah. And high stakes here. High stakes. Yeah. Now a variation is you can just cook a turkey breast instead of the whole turkey, but we're going to do a whole turkey. Yeah. So the most important thing is to make a stuffing. Okay. Now you okay. can go to the store and buy all kinds of stuffing. All stuffing is is dried bread with different types of spices and herbs. Mm -hmm. So this was a squaw bread that we made about two weeks ago. You made this bread. And we made this bread. So this is molasses that makes this bread uh, basically a sourdough bread with molasses that made it dark. It looks like a rye bread, but it's not a rye bread. It isn't. And so what we did is we slice. It's actually a beautiful multi-grain old recipe bread. So then we sliced it thin, knowing we were going to use it for this. Mm -hmm. And we let it just dry. Do you is there is there any bread you should stay away from? Mm, just stuffing? soft. Just, you don't want to use soft bread for this. Okay. It's got to be dry. Okay. And another thing is we could have done it with panko. So panko is a Japanese yeah. breadcrumb, yes. and it works really well too. Mm. Uh, but I want this to be country style. So mm. I basically just took the bread and broke it into pieces. Okay. And then what I did is I just used carrots and onion and celery. Okay. With some onion, as, as I said, sautéed yeah. first. Okay. I added the carrots and then the celery. I sauteed that. Mm -hmm. I added it to the bread and then I basically loosened it up or covered it with the stock that we had going on the stove. Yes. So that's how I got it. So I have it like this. Now I could have added pine nuts. I could have added lamb. I could have added a lot of different things to it. Now is this the point where you would leave it if you were going to make it ahead of time? Because you can make this ahead of time. Right? Absolutely. Okay. You, you can make this days ahead of time. Okay. Uh, so I also added some of those mushrooms that we had with our cauliflower. The oyster and mushrooms. so I sauteed those in with it just to have them to give more flavor. Yeah. Uh, we can stick this in the bird. We can stick this in a dish and cook it in the oven. There's all kinds of ways to, uh, to uh, work with this stuffing. Okay. What's the benefit of putting it in the bird versus in the oven? I think one of the biggest benefits of putting it in with the bird is that it's going to get flavor from the juices of the turkey itself that's going to bring more flavor to the stuffing. And obviously make it more moist. And make it more moist and make it really good. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do mm -hmm. is we're going to stuff the bird. Let me just switch this up. We're gonna stuff our bird. And if you wanna do it, I'll yeah, just sure. I'll just hold I have this. Just wash just my hands. Good, just use your hands and yes. just fill it inside. Okay. Now I soak this turkey in a brine of salt and water to be able to create osmosis to bring out the water and the protein or in the muscle. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these animals that we eat, the muscle has about seventy one to seventy two percent water. So we exchange the water in the muscle for a salted water which tenderizes and brings in more flavor to the, to the bird. So I did it for uh, uh, two days in uh, a brine. And do, you do can, you, how does that work? Is you submerge it? I stick it in a, in, a, in, a, in a container and I fill it with salt water and I use uh, okay. two pounds to a gallon of water, two pounds of salt to a gallon of water, mm -hmm. and I just stick it in the refrigerator and let it sit and then I soak it for another couple hours in clean fresh water. Very good. How does this look? Is this okay, beautiful. Maybe we should show the camera how this... That's his. So Caroline stuffed our turkey. And now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do something called trussing. Okay. So in trussing, I'm going to take twine. Now you'll notice that when you buy turkeys, they all come with uh, uh, little things to connect the legs together. Yes. But they tend to be plastic, and I don't like sticking the plastic in the oven. No. Although we have a this uh, smart, yeah, of course it's gonna melt now then melt into the chicken. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm just gonna truss the turkey. And the idea here is that we're going to end up bringing the muscle of the legs and the breast together, which is gonna just hold in the juices. And that's what's gonna cause it to be nice and juicy. Okay, so now you can see it's going to pull on the turkey and hold it together. Ah. And that's going to allow us... It's like us lassoed. To, yeah, it's going to allow us to keep our flavor. Okay. 
ะเดี๋ยวเราจะเอาพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพวกพ
and they're not necessarily potatoes you would make mashed potatoes out of. They would be a little bit more fibrous for a mashed potato okay. um, than a russet potato that you might use. Okay. Uh, but these are beautiful, they hold their texture and they have a lot of nice flavor and do really well roasted. So if you're not comfortable with tossing the bowl as I did with the cauliflower, <laughs> here we could just use a spoon too. Okay. Or you could toss. Or you could toss. Yeah. And what you really want to do with this is you have to remember that we're developing a vinaigrette with this and we want to make sure that all of the potatoes are coated evenly because they have so many surfaces because I sliced them. Mm -hmm. uh, you can leave the finger lean potatoes whole too if you like. Oh, okay. So we do that and it's just we want to make sure that we really get the salt and the pepper and every, everything distributed nicely. If you leave them whole, do you need to adjust the cooking time? Um, it depends on the size. Generally, yes. And I want these to come out within 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. So that's why I sliced them. They were just larger than normal finger lean potatoes. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to set this aside. Okay. So we could put plastic wrap on it and just leave it out and you, for you an hour. And you can make this a day before or not? Really? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. But you definitely could do it a day before and it'll just get more flavor. Okay. Just toss it again before you use it. But sometimes uh, the potatoes will get brown as, as the day goes we on. We already so coated them with oil, so, so protect it'll protect it, it from the it. oxygen because it's coming from oxidation. Great. Okay. Um, and so anyways, we're going to set and let these sit out, uh, okay. and we will wait to put them in the oven in another hour with our turkey. Okay. okay. Well, let's look at the turkey. Let's it's do. It's been two hours. About 45 minutes ago, we added our potatoes to the roasting pan. Okay. Let's see how it all turned out. And we see our wow. thermometer is up. Oh. So we know our turkey's done. Very nice. Isn't that beautiful? Now, and the stuffing, the exposed stuffing is, is um, it's all fine. It's all fine. Yeah. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll take our turkey out of the... Now, we didn't add any herbs to the, um, to the turkey. Are there certain herbs that work well? Uh, rosemary works really well. Okay. Um, I'm just breaking it loose a little bit. Remember, I sat it on the vegetables so that I could pull it out. All right, Richard, the turkey looks great. Now the last step is to carve it, right? Let's carve it, All yes. Right. <laughs> All right. You do the honors. Of okay. <laughs> oh, no, are, there any, are there any special tricks to carving or just go for it? Uh, you know, there's a, it's, there's a lot of different ways to doing it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times what people do is they bring the turkey out. It's always been the customary thing for the man of the house to carve yes. the turkey. It's very traditional. Well, the reality is that this is a lot better job done in the kitchen. Uh -huh. uh, because what we'll do is we'll separate the legs and we'll take the breast yeah. off and we'll slice them up. It's much easier because as we slice the breast normally like this at the table, yeah. we end up leaving a lot of meat on the bones. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to start by removing the legs. That looked beautiful. Is that, does it break apart pretty easily? Very evenly. Okay. And there's a natural gap in the legs. Mm -hmm. And it's our, you know, it's always our big worry is whether or not this part cooked enough. Because that, that's where we put, that's where we would have put the thermometer mm -hmm. had we done it ourselves. And so here is our thigh and leg. And where is the wishbone? The wishbone's right in here. Okay. You know, a lot of people like to dry that out mm -hmm. and put that apart later on. And here's a thigh and a leg. And so the leg is where, um, and the thigh is where all the dark meat is. That's correct. So this, it's the, the dark meat comes from the meat that moves basically around. Mm -hmm. uh, a duck has red dark breasts because it's, it flies. Mm -hmm. And so the muscle develops the iron, iron mm -hmm. from the blood by being used. A turkey doesn't fly. Is a dark meat more nutritious? Is there any nutritional value associated with it? I think it's a matter of preference. Yeah. I prefer the dark meat because I think it has more flavor. That's what I hear. And I'm just following along. Uh, the nice thing about all of these poultries, chickens, mm -hmm. quails, is that they're all the same. In what way? What, the shape? Body shape? Uh, it just the, the, yeah, the shape. Yeah. Nice thing about doing it this way is that the stuffing will just come out naturally if you just cut Stuffing away. Stuffing will just come out naturally. <laughs> and here we pull out our mushroom stuffing, which cooked just beautifully inside this bird. 
Like so moist. It really is, yeah. and it's moist from the juices of the bird, mm -hmm. which gives it so much flavor. Yeah. And as you can see, if done right, it isn't terribly messy. <laughs> Quick and easy and neat. Quick and easy and neat, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so that's right now. We can decide whether or not we want to uh, have the wings uh, on, our on our platter or not. That's a personal preference. I'm going to now put our, mush our, our potatoes here. All the gorgeous colors of Thanksgiving. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. They really are beautiful. And wait till you taste them. They really taste good. Uh -huh. And now I'm going to slice the breast. Some people like to eat the skin, and that's fine, right? Eating the skin is yeah, totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. And then last but not least, which we have that we uh, made before, is we have our gravy. And this is just a traditional gravy made with herbs. It was a roux, right? And we thickened it with a roux. So we took the liquids and stock that we had, and we thickened it with a roux made of flour and butter. Mm -hmm. And then we added herbs. Which herbs did you add? Uh, we added uh, the same herbs uh, that we used in the stuffing, ah. which was um, rosemary, yeah. we used sage. oregano, and we used sage. Yeah. Did, do you recommend keeping the herbs the same kind of throughout the- I do. As if you don't want to have any conflicting flavors. Exactly right. Yeah. You don't want too many flavors. It's beautiful. Quick and easy and flavorful. Yeah. Voila. Here it comes. Well, Caroline, here is your quick and easy Thanksgiving feast. This is amazing. So recapping our, our menu, we had... Okay. We made the soup. We let it sit in the refrigerator. It does better being in the refrigerator and then reheated for flavor. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, One with day? Two days? A few days. It, the soup will last for four or five days in the refrigerator. No problem. Great. Uh, then we made the cranberries. Again, can be made in advance, sometime in advance. We can serve it hot or cold. Uh, after that, we had the spaghetti squash, which mm -hmm. we noticed we just roasted in the oven and we mixed with butter and salt and pepper. So fast, so quick. It really good. And then we had this wonderful dish of roasted cauliflower and oyster mushrooms. Uh, beautiful, beautiful dish. Yep. And then, of course, we had the feast, which is the turkey. Mm -hmm. with the stuffing made from the squaw bread, the mm -hmm. roasted finger lean potatoes, and an herb gravy. It's incredible. Looks Which pretty good. <laughs> it looks amazing, and it was quick and easy, each of these items. And if you start the day, if you're cooking it all in one day, when you just start the day out with a turkey, and by, start by the time the it's done, everything else is done. That's right. And, 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 and if you go and do this and follow the recipes, uh, yes. you'll find that it is quick and easy. Yeah. And those recipes will be available on our website. Richard Hanna, thank you so much. This is Caroline, really thank week. you so much and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And thank you to Le Cordon Bleu, Pasadena, California. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.